Hello and welcome to this video with me, Dave Newton here for Wilkinson Cameras. And in this video, we're gonna be talking all about landscape photography with the Canon EOS R5. And we're also gonna have a little look at some printing as well. So the goal is that we are going to capture an image, obviously, and then we're gonna take that image and run it through the Canon workflow and print it on the new Canon Pixma Pro 300 printer. So we're up in the Lake District and we have, uh, we've spent the day out today. We didn't have the best of days in terms of the weather, but we've got our fingers crossed for tomorrow. The weather forecast is looking a lot better. And we're trying to decide exactly where we're going to go. Now for landscape photography, this is one of the key things that you need to nail down. It's a key skill that you have to develop. And the reality is there's no right answer. You've a lot of time got to go with your gut. But there are some things that you can think about to begin with that may help narrow down your choice. So how do you narrow it down? How do you pick what you're going for? Well, tomorrow morning, we're going to try and get a sunrise. If sunrise doesn't work, we're going to try and get a sunset. Um, we're maximizing our opportunities with the vagaries of the British weather. So it's getting late. We've had a long day. We're going to crack off to bed fairly soon, I think, uh, ready for the very early start because we definitely want to be on location well before sunrise. Sunrise is going to be at about, uh, what time is sunrise? 6.59 tomorrow morning. So we want to be on location by, I don't know, quarter past six so that we're in a spot ready to start thinking about shooting and figuring out what our composition is going to be. Uh, so early night is essential. Uh, and uh, with that, I shall see you all in the morning. Okay, so I'm just working out where I want the camera to be. What a lot of people do, mistake a lot of people make, is they just put the tripod down and then they shoot from that position. <clears throat> and unfortunately, that rarely results in the best pictures. You need to be a lot more considered about exactly where you want the camera to be so I'm trying to work out exactly the height I need it to be, so I know I want the camera to be about here. So I've got to get the tripod into this position. Uh, so I've got the camera, that's about where I think the camera wants to be. Um, it's gonna give me the field of view that I'm looking for, but also the right elevation. Um, now, sometimes I'll use a center column where I can then adjust it uh, increment by increment, but here I've got a leveling base instead. <clears throat> and this allows me to make sure that Everything is going to be absolutely perfectly level. And if I wanted to shoot a panorama, I could, because I'd be able to pan around a level base. Um, next up is about finding the right camera settings uh, for the exposure. So the amount of light that you've got. And obviously at a sunrise, the light's changing very quickly. So you do have to work quite quickly. I prefer to shoot in manual, which means I've got complete control. It's not changing shot to shot unless I change it. Um, and you'll note here, uh, this looks like a bit of a, a, a beast of a weird setup. So I've got an EOS R5. I'm using a, a 24 mil tilt and shift lens. This is what's called a Rigetti TSE frame. It allows me to adjust the shift of the lens by moving the camera without moving the lens. So I avoid any parallax issues. Um, and that effectively, by using a tilt shift lens, I get to keep the camera very level. So this is now totally perpendicular. And with a shift, I can change my framing to make sure that I get the height that I want, but I also get the composition that I want with the foreground, the midground, and the background. So the height controls what the uh, midground looks like effectively, the depth of the midground. And then the shift is controlling how much foreground and how much background I've got relative by just moving the whole thing up and down. I particularly like tilt shift lenses because with a wide angle lens, when you tilt the camera forwards, which you will do to try and get the foreground in, you end up with your verticals converging. They fall in. If you tilt up, obviously they fall out. And that's not a look that I particularly enjoy. So a 24 mil tilt shift gives me that lovely square view that I think is much more natural. Because when you look up with your head like this, you don't watch everything fall out to the edges. So a tilt shift lens gives me that more natural view. 
Now I've set my exposure. I'm using the, uh, the, the tilting screen, which is just a godsend for landscape photography. You can get the camera into awkward positions. You notice I'm kind of perched here. It looks reasonably comfortable. This is actually not the easiest position to get in because this, this tree is very, very slippery. Uh, a little bit damp and I've, I've got myself into position and now the tilting screen is giving me a good view of what's going on without having to look down through the viewfinder. I can put the histogram on and when I'm setting my exposure, if you look at the histogram, I try and make my exposure so that the histogram isn't touching the bottom left hand edge. Okay, so it doesn't really matter what your shutter speed, aperture and ISO is, but obviously you want your ISO to be as low as possible, so down at ISO 100. I'm choosing that I want quite a lot of depth of field, so I've closed my aperture down, I'm at f16, and I focused kind of towards the end of this, uh, this tree, which should give me depth of field from, from the foreground at least far enough through, if not all the way to cat bells. It'll give me most of the way to cat bells. And then I've adjusted my shutter speed so that I've got a tiny bit of space for the shadows at the bottom end, so that they're not completely blocked up. And then I need to take my ND grad here. Uh, so this is a three-stop ND. And I'm going to slide this down in the front and bring the sky down to match because otherwise the sky is going to be overexposed. So I'm just going to crack on with that now while we've got a little bit of light. So we've done two exposures. One of them is the fast quote unquote shutter speed, which is about 10 seconds. And then I put a six stop ND on there and that's given me a really long exposure. So I calculated my shutter speed, needed to be four minutes and 16 seconds because six stops onto four seconds, I think was my, my previous exposure, um, takes me to four minutes and 16 seconds. Uh, and you get a very different feel in the, in the shorter exposure. Uh, there's the detail in the cloud, there's, you can see that kind of heavy cloud, it's a bit foreboding. In the long exposure, everything just kind of blends down into a smooth silkiness. It's very personal preference as to which you prefer. I think for me, this kind of morning shooting in black and white, I actually prefer the slightly faster shutter speed, the four seconds. I think it just gives it a bit more drama and a bit more punch. I feel that the, the really slow shutter speed is, is almost too long. It's almost like um, it loses some of the depth and interest while it's, it's super smooth. Uh, I'm, I'm much rather a bit of the drama of the clouds. So as I said, I've been shooting with the R5 and right now the R5 is quite honestly my favourite camera in the world. It's the most all-round camera as far as I can tell. Um, whatever subject you want to shoot, it's capable. But from a landscape perspective, there are so many little things that make it really, really effective and efficient to use. It's full frame, so I get that nice wide field of view. It's 45 megapixels, so I've got an awful lot of detail. For example, the, the tree stump in the foreground is going to be rendered in absolute beautifully sharp detail. And more than that, it's just the way the camera handles. All of the buttons are in the right place, the dials are in the right place, the menus make sense, you can navigate your way around them really quickly. And it's also super configurable. So if you go into the orange menu, which is the custom function menu, you can pick custom controls or you can control what each of the dials does and each of the buttons do. And from there, you can make the camera work exactly how you want it to for the situations that you shoot in and the subjects you shoot, because each one is going to require a slightly different setup. It pays to spend time getting to know the camera. This is true of the R5 and the R6 and the R series. In fact, it's true of any camera. You should spend your time getting to know it. But when you've got so much control in terms of how you configure things, it really does pay dividends in the long run. So you're not standing here while the light's looking beautiful, trying to figure out exactly what you want to do. Everything is right at your fingertips and you can control the camera and not miss those crucial moments.